Welcome to the Self-Care Creative Podcast, a show where I talk about the struggles, mental health, and work-life balance of creatives. I'm your host, Ray, and I hope you will follow me through a journey of figuring out a better life as a creative through deep dives into self-care topics and interviews with other creatives about their ups and downs. Don't forget to follow the podcast and give it a review to support the show. Welcome back. I have another guest on today and it's gonna be a chaotic little episode. <laughs> And I hope you're gonna love it because we're both just, we're chaos squared in this episode. And I hope you enjoy it. I'm having a guest again on my podcast. Introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Michael. Uh, you might know me as uh, Rexon Around on Instagram, or you might not know me at all. And if you don't know me, um, I make a lot of Star Wars content, uh, basically... Star Wars content creator on every level except canon. We haven't quite made it to canon yet. Uh, and I also own a bike company uh, called Super 73. So those are the two things that keep me pretty busy. Thanks for having me. You're always welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> that made me think. We had a little bit of a, a we had a tough time getting this thing yeah. oh going. Gosh, yeah. you, no, you just you remembered. Just type... You just remembered <laughs> because there's that on every level except canonically. <laughs> I just, I instantly had like, the the thing in my head coming up of like Greg just going getting close to the mic and saying it's canonical <laughs> because Canon. since since I started listening to your podcast every time I read that word anywhere I have Greg in the back of my mind that's cursed yes. <laughs> and, and for those oh. who might not know yeah my my co-host Greg loves the word canonical <laughs> and so whenever something comes up if if somebody says canon or that's not canon he'll stop the podcast and go canonical. <laughs> Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Ray, Ray, thank you for having me. I I, I, I want to peel back the curtain a little bit and, and say that we had this podcast scheduled to record last week <laughs> um, and it was going to be at 9 a.m. my time. And I assume for you that, you know, 9 a.m. rolled by, 9.20 rolled by, 9.30 rolled by, 10 rolled by, 10.30 rolled by. And you're like, okay, maybe he's not coming. Um, this it, oh man what a great <laughs> podcast to be on talking about uh self-care and 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 struggling with creativity because uh wow i missed two podcasts that day i completely overslept i took a little bit too much uh melatonin and some zequil because i was having a really tough time and uh overslept i, I must have been in a coma <laughs> So thank you for giving me the opportunity just, to come back and redeem I'm just, myself. I'm just imagining you just like completely fucking knocked out, just drooling. <laughs> Dead. As like the alarms are going off, the cars yeah, are honking, yeah. like I'm not waking up through any of it. Yeah, it was brutal, <laughs> um, which made me realize I need to start relying on my uh, assistant more often. I have an assistant here and, and it's weird to 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 rely on an assistant. It, it's, it, it, feels, it feels kind of like, it, it almost feels arrogant to be like yeah let my assistant get that but the truth is when when you have so much going on you have to rely on others for help and and it's a hard thing to have to admit and so first thing i did ray was you you remember i included her on the email thread and i was like she'll make sure i'm here i mean she sent me a text bright and early this morning too to be like hey are you good and i'm like i'm good i'm i'm, I'm gonna do it <laughs> uh well, I, I mean, it's helpful. I mean, even even if someone doesn't have an assistant, just having like tech that like helps you yes. with stuff. I mean, I don't have anyone, but I have like, I use Notion for like all types of stuff. That's like... Yeah, reminders. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm Necessary. Like, oh, God. And then, oh, yeah, we, we before before this podcast, we took like half an hour to just figure out <laughs> audio. Audio wasn't working. Of course it wasn't, you know? Of course. Everything's going to go wrong. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. And, and we survived and we navigated through it, Ray. And I'm just happy to be here talking to you. That was a whole journey in and of itself already. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like you manifested that like when i when i asked him to be on my on this po podcast he answered I, I said something along the lines of um so you can like something with me being chaotic mess mm -hmm. <laughs> and you said you just said <clears throat> i thrive on chaos <laughs> and and <laughs> here we are <laughs> i proved you i proved it to you i do oh god yeah that is that is how i live imagine that scenario we just went through with setting everything up and nothing working imagine living in that 24 hours a day seven days a week you now have a look into my life <laughs> that is how it is poor janae just 
<laughs> yeah, I know that poor girl. <laughs> oh, that's um, yeah. <laughs> no, that was the whole journey because I, I was I genuinely thought it was like on my end the pro on like the whole problem with audio because I realized that I, my, I, I had my at my system at my system out like my system sound out and I was like oh my god what's that my system sound being like on mute the entire time but it's not that's just the other stuff that whatever <laughs> to, to the to the listeners please note that if if you are ever having trouble everybody has trouble i mean that's that's such a good kind of <sighs> you know uh, it's a good example of uh, like the grind like it's not easy to do things it's hard to do things it's hard to make content it's hard to even find the drive to do stuff and then when your technology fights you it can become almost like rage inducing, but oh, yeah. it's important to remember the goal. And the goal, Ray, was to podcast with you. So here we are. I hear you. I hear that you have a few questions for me too, which is exciting. Yes. I'm excited. I, 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 also, wanna... I put the fun ones first because those are the easiest to answer. <laughs> Please give me the give me the easy hits and then we'll go for the hard ones. Okay. You talked about every every level other than canon. And that mm -hmm. was fitting because <laughs> what do you want to see in Star Wars live action that hasn't been done yet? That maybe is already like in the in the non canonical. Yeah, stuff. you know what I'm I'm most excited about um, seeing what they do with aerial battles. We've we've seen the Jedi, we've seen those stories. I want to see the soldiers and the pilots. And and I was a big fan of uh, you know a, a big fan of studying World War II history uh, and and kind of mid-century uh, uh history and my, my favorite part were the planes it was it was learning about like the pilots and and what they did and 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 how brave they were and the x-wing pilots are very they're modeled very similarly to that and so it's very cool to get to get more into this world and, and rogue squadron i think is i am endlessly excited for that movie because i think it's just going to be a, a, a dog fighting sort of you know old world world war ii style movie I'm excited. I don't even know which one I'm ex most excited for because I'm still catching up. Like I just started watching uh, the Clone Wars because I. That's a journey. Uh, yes, <laughs> especially yeah. like the the first. I think it's the first two seasons that have like a different kind of style a little bit still. Yeah, and low rough, low rough to get through. Yeah, <laughs> it's. Uh, I also like watch it in two languages because sometimes I watch with my mom and sometimes I watch without her, and it's oh, oh yeah. So like uh, sometimes it's like weird to switch. Like to yeah. watch and then switch language and completely different characters. Uh, I mean, animation is the only place where I can like uh, where I don't get a reach deep inside of me for the the dub because oh, German dubs are just yeah, that makes sense. <sighs> it's gotta be frustrating. <laughs> this is so frustrating. Yeah, well, like okay, the only like I, I don't I don't even I don't even know what I'm most excited for because I feel like I. There's like this big part of Star Wars that I ha don't know that much about. Like I remember when it like first came out, Clone Wars. I was like nine or ten. <laughs> I was yeah. small. I'm turning twenty two next week. Um, <laughs> and now I'm like, oh yeah, why have I never watched this? This has been out the entire time. <laughs> it has some great moments, and I'm excited you're getting through it. And and once season three kind of kicks in, it really starts to pick up momentum, and and it starts to become you know more exciting. There's there's less of that wandering around and whining sort of I will, uh, storytelling. I will finally, finally understand half of what my timeline is talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like, but like I, I, what, what I would love to have in live action, which is more of like, not love, like a whole concept like you do, but like I would, I would, I just want pink lightsabers. <laughs> I want pink lightsabers too, you know me. I want pink lightsabers. I want lightsabers in any color. I think happen. Oh, yes. <laughs> I just want to see that so I can like so I can like show the like I have like uh four uncles on my mom's side and they all like Star Wars and I just mm, I just you know like th that type of fan that's like yeah middle age and it's like mm. yeah <laughs> and I get trying to so go you're, you're, mm. <laughs> you're talking about the kinds of fans I don't necessarily like right the ones that kind of gatekeep a little bit is that what you're saying not gatekeeping but there's like always like the, there's always like a little bit of like uh misogyny elitism within yeah 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 yeah, yeah. like like and I, I just want to be able to be like but pink light service exists and i it's, and i and i i'm gonna get one it's sooner canonical. Or later. <laughs> it's canonical you can go to them and say pink light are canonical oh hell yeah i i really <laughs> oh, i really want that to happen because like i mean wow i mean like, getting like a good lightsaber is like super expensive <laughs> 
mm-hmm. especially when you're not in the US and you have like I believe like it everything yeah. around the corner pretty much and shipping is like easy I mean oh my god shipping stuff here is like fifty dollars I wanted yeah. I want I wanted to well, de- KR, KR Sabres is located in in England has mm. has what's what's that like I, I mean if for anybody near in Europe I would I would really uh, strongly suggest Padawan's Outpost and mm-hmm. KR Sabers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're they're the best of the best, and and they're located in Europe. Yeah, that's weird because I have no idea how that's now because of Brexit and. Oh right, uh, right. It might just be just as expensive. No, not that exp- no, It would be fifty. <laughs> it wouldn't be fifty, but it would yeah. be weird uh, because I don't know. Since the like the European Union has like a certain amount of money you can spend on something without paying taxes for like shipping it, mm, and if it's above, it. if it's above that. Uh, amount of money you have to pay extra taxes for putting like getting it inside of the country and i don't know if that's a problem now because of brexit so yeah that's gonna be interesting well like i just i really just uh, my mom and i were just like yep we're we're gonna get lightsabers when when we that's awesome so so you're from a your your whole family loves star wars pretty much like at least, at least like my mom's side i don't really have contact in my father's side of the family but like my mom's side of the family is like yeah, yeah. I, cool. I, I remember, I distinctly remember growing up with like a very shitty, like plastic lightsaber that stopped working yeah. after two times of using it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now I, I don't own, I, I, don't, I don't own a single piece of merch. What? I don't it's know time, either. It's time to start your journey. I don't. I, you're, you're, oh. the, you're talking to somebody who's physically surrounded. Yeah. By he, Star Wars he, helmets. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like four helmets just in, yeah. in frame and out of frame. There are even more of them. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of dozen helmets on this on this set right now. Oh but my yeah. god. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, I'd love to 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 hear to hear some of the other questions. I'd love to get into that. I mean, I already talked about about the series we we're both excited for. I'm, I think the most excited. Mm, what which which one am I the most excited for? I think Andor. I mean, you already said you're like Rogue Squadron. Squadron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What is the worst piece of Star Wars merchandise you've ever come across? Interesting. Interesting. I thought that was the perfect I mean, question. I, so. <laughs> When it comes to merch, I think that there's, you know, it, it, there's no levels of horrible that it won't sink to if it's like <laughs> unlicensed stuff. So uh, what I'm saying is, is there is like just so much garbage out there, so much garbage. But if we're talking about like officially licensed Star Wars merch, um, I had a Jar Jar Binks mask back in like 2000 and three 2002 mm-hmm. and my dad used to i don't know why he did this but at night he would put it on and go outside <laughs> and then sneak up to my window when i'm in my bedroom like Ooh. watching tv or, or playing game boy and he would bang on the window and it would freak me out every time <laughs> because that jar jar mask was so horrifically made it was it was it was out of nightmares like it was seriously nightmare fuel and so that might be the worst piece of star wars merch i've ever owned traumatized uh, and that was for the rest of that, your life. yeah that that still haunts me to this day oh, oh my god like I, I just imagine there's like this fake alien video of like an alien looking inside of a window and looking around that, it was that it was exactly yeah, yeah that. that's what i yeah. pictured <laughs> It was oh terrifying. my god! Like yeah, the, the the worst merchandise I've ever come across that was also officially licensed was like this this plastic lightsaber. It was like so. It wasn't even like the 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 the, you know what I mean? Like where you hold it. Telescoping one. Yeah. Uh. How, how big was it? I mean, it was made for kids. It was just hard plastic, yeah. and but like yeah. it didn't even look. It wasn't even like it didn't look like it was made uh, based on like a canonical. Yeah, saber. It's just. I know, I know. I definitely know what you're talking about. Oh. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and it made sounds. At least it made sounds. But then it stopped yeah. working after like two or three times, and I sat there as a child, and I was like, "Dude, I could, I could equally just use a bamboo stick to, to do yeah. and yeah. make my own sounds." If this, yeah. If they can make money, they will make money. So that makes oh, sense. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> we're more into the into the less star wars e questions yeah do you think you have good boundaries around work would right, because you have like so many things going on 
Interesting. Yeah. Good, good question. So do, do I have good boundaries set up? Um, you know, I think, I think it could be yes and no. I think that there is uh, a necessity in letting something ha- for a season kind of take control over you. So what I mean by that is if you're starting something, um, or you're doing something that might be hard to achieve, letting it completely saturate you completely take over can be a good thing because you really learn what it's like to live in that thing. You know, when it came to starting this company, it was for, for quite a while, it was everything for me. It was the only thing I had. And that meant that I was going to put every single bit of myself into it. Um, and that was really important to get this thing off the ground. I think that, um, you know, a lot of people, uh, when they start something, they kind of look at it as, as a little side project. And I think if you really want to own it and 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 really control it, you have to let it kind of control you for a bit. But what's important is knowing when to stop that. Oh, so yeah. it can only last for a season because that's when you get obsessive and out of control and, and you start losing control of things. And so what that looks like is for a season, get get everything you need take the time to let it control everything and, and, and let it breathe and then start to rein it in almost like you're, you know, you're, you're in a carriage or you're, you're in a wagon and you're pulling back on the reins because then you need to start to figure out how it fits into your life rather than how you fit into it. Um, and so, you know, with super 73 now, I think I have really good boundaries because I've learned when to shut off my phone. I've learned when, hey, I don't need to necessarily respond to every Reddit comment, or I don't need to respond to that email right now. It's 930. Now, there are some emails that as a business owner, you respond to at 930, um, you know, at night, but but it is, it's definitely something that that I feel like I have tamed kind of like it is some sort of a wild stallion, you know, it was, it was bucking me around for the first few minutes of the ride. And now it's something that I feel like I do have good control over. Yeah. It's like a, it's a journey because sometimes it, sometimes, like you said, sometimes you just need to like, I don't want to use the word hyper fixate, but like, yeah, right. kind, kind of like that. Yeah. yeah you do. You need to obsess a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Without it letting get, let it, let it, let, how do you say that phrase? Letting it get the best of you, right? That's what it was. That was perfect. That was it. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes when you get like too focused on an outcome, the journey is not fun anymore. That's, right, right. Yeah. It's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, it's you have to make sure to pace yourself, and it's okay to get a good head start, but yeah. then know when it's like, okay, I gotta be, I gotta be smart. I gotta save my energy. Yeah, definitely. I feel like a lot of people struggle with the whole like. Uh, not working or not responding to emails after yeah after a certain point in the day and even i need to work on that but like that's so important that's so yeah. important i mean i mean i i, I wrote you uh that, that, no that's okay that, i mean know, that's, no, that's, I, I find a, i find a good example because i i i have that there's, there's actually like a little story behind this <laughs> i answered your email on a Sunday at like 7 p.m. my time <laughs> and usually I wouldn't do that because Sunday is like my no work day mm-hmm. but you also gotta make like rules with yourself when you have like mental illness like I mean I do have several mental illnesses and I sometimes mm-hmm. have entire days during the week where I like do nothing and then it's, then I have like the rule like that's yeah, okay like for me to answer to an email on a Sunday because I'm if I have the energy on a Sunday, I'm going to do the stuff on a Sunday. That that's makes, also yeah, important. That yeah. makes total sense. That's, and and, it, and yeah. it sounds like you are, you are very decisive about it. It's a mm-hmm. decision you make. You're like, okay, I'm going to do this rather than it being an impulsive sort of like, oh, my phone buzzed. I got to respond to it. It sounds like you were like, no, I feel like I can answer an email right now. So I'm going to yeah. do it. And mm-hmm. that, that, that feels very healthy to me. That's also like super important for like people that have executive dysfunction, uh, to figure mm. out. I mean, that's like a normal thing to have when you have depression, when you have anxiety, ADHD, autism. I mean, a lot of people have that. <laughs> and sometimes I can just, I, I want to do stuff when I can. And then other days I'm like, oh, I can, right. I can bring myself to do this right now. So I'm going to do it right now. So there's like this, these are my boundaries, but they need to be flexible enough for like whatever I'm going through. Right. Totally. Yeah. What do you th- wish people would understand about your profession or both of your professions? 
Um, that's a good question. I, I've got a, I've got a really, I've got a little bit of a heavy answer to this. Oh. Um, you know, and, and it's interesting and, and I do it to other people as well. I, I didn't realize that it was a thing until, you know, this point, but people assume quite a bit about me. They assume my entire existence. Uh, and that's something I didn't realize I did about other people that are in the public eye. You see a few brief moments of my life. Uh, anybody who follows me on Instagram or TikTok or sees me on the For You page or watches a podcast uh, or, you know, sees me through business through Super 73, you see five minutes of my day and you make an assumption about who I am based on those five minutes. And that's something that is really made me think about what I say, how I act, how I behave in those minutes, because, you know, sometimes I think I'm being funny and chaotic and, you know, and, and wild and it's silly and they know me, they know that I, there's more than that. But then you start to realize like, oh, I've only been showing that side. They don't see the other 23 hours in a day. Mm. And now people assume things about me. And, and there's a, a good example is on, on TikTok. I have, you know, quite a following. Um, I have some big hits uh, occasionally. And I realized that, you know, I've always looked at myself as a small Star Wars creator. I, I just, I've always, you know, looked at other accounts that are bigger and that's kind of something everybody does. But I, you know, picture myself to be a small Star Wars creator. There are smaller Star Wars creators who look at me and say, wow, Michael's so inaccessible. Michael is, is you know, too, too um, arrogant to duet us or to stitch this video or to answer to this thing I tagged him in. And the truth is it's, it's not any of those things. It's that I've got so many things being thrown at me every single day on social media that if I can respond to 10%, it's, I've spent hours on my phone. Um, you know, I'm tagged in so many things because I have such a fun community that I communicate with that I miss so many things. And if I miss something, then that assumption becomes, oh, well, he's just too arrogant to answer. He's too, um, you know, he thinks too much of himself. And so I know I'm I'm a villain in some people's stories who I've never even talked to mm -hmm. and I've never even interacted with. And that's something that's kind of tough for me because I have this need to make everybody like me, this, this sort of like um, insecurity where I need to convince people that I'm not a bad guy, that, you know, that I, you know, that I, that I, anybody who thinks that because I didn't respond to them uh, the way they wanted me to, that, that I'm, that I'm a bad guy. And so I, I feel like, you know, I've spent hours, hours when I find somebody who makes an assumption about me trying to convince them otherwise. And my co-host Greg is like, why do you do that? Like, you, you know, like let them think what they're going to think. And and it's something I'm really working to learn to be like, hey, I'm going to present myself in this light and I'm going to be okay if that doesn't click with some people. You're always going to have people who dislike you. You can be the greatest person in the world and you're still a villain in somebody's story. And that's that's something that you just have to be okay with if you put yourself online. Yeah, I think in the same vein, it's also important for people to like realize that you never know what's going on behind someone right. someone else's like social media. I mean, I'm super small. I don't have a lot of followers. And even I already had like moments in like my past where people assumed stuff about me because I posted about certain topics and I was like, right. um, no. <laughs> um, and I'm I'm trying to be like very authentic and I'm pretty like indifferent if someone doesn't like what i do mm -hmm. they can just like i don't know unfollow go away <laughs> um yeah i don't really have like i mean the stuff you described is a little bit like uh people pleasy <laughs> yeah um, absolutely I I, I, I I definitely think i am yeah and i feel like i don't know it's like the same it's, it's from a point of like being thinking from a shallow standpoint when you judge someone on the internet you know like yeah that's like judging someone for i don't know being overweight and you don't know if they have a chronic illness or something like that like right. you never you never know the whole full story i feel like yeah that's the thing a lot of people forget especially and if, and if that's taught it's such a good point if that's taught me anything like if this whole thing has taught me anything it's that i don't judge anymore and mm -hmm. i definitely did at one point when i first came into the star wars community i did i was very much in like the mean girl crowd 
I, I, I rolled with a crew that I, I shouldn't have rolled with. And I, you know, I would, we, we text each other things or make jokes. And, um, that's something that is like, it still haunts me to this day. The people that I used to waste my time on, you just get, you get wrapped up in it. You get wrapped mm -hmm. up in this culture of, well, it's on the internet. It doesn't matter. Like it, it doesn't, nothing matters. And, and it's like, well, you know what? Like you, you are saying things about a real human being. And that's something that cannot, cannot be tolerated. And that's why I speak out so aggressively against it. Now, when I talk about my story, I talk about how, you know, when I first started cosplaying, I was very elitist. And if somebody's, um, armor wasn't up to 501st standards. I wanted to like pick it apart and I wanted to talk about like why it wasn't quote good enough. And then, you know, I, I started to realize very quickly, thankfully that that's, that's the furthest thing from anything that is necessary or beneficial in this community that, you know, these, these costumes and these standards are all fictional. They're all made up. And if a cosplay makes somebody happy, um, then it is just as valid as a cosplay that looks like the thing that came off screen. And as a result, I've made some of those sorts of cosplays that are mm -hmm. not accurate. And mm -hmm. it's so much fun to do that. I have so much more fun now than I used to have. So maybe, that's maybe, an important maybe thing explain, to... maybe explain what the, what the five or first is for listeners that don't know what that is. <laughs> right. So for those who don't know, there's a uh, costume organization and they, and they do charitable work and they're a great organization for the most part, but there is some elitism. So what it is, is you build a costume. Um, and you submit it, uh, uh, you build a costume from Star Wars, you submit it, and there is a team of judges that decide if your costume is good enough to be allowed in the club or not. And that's okay. I, I think ultimately that's okay. I think that they can have their standards and they should be able to approve or deny people, but it shouldn't mean anything. If you love what you made and they tell you it's not good enough, that shouldn't ruin the experience of your costume. That shouldn't be something that makes you not want to cosplay anymore. And I think that's what people don't get is they act like the 501st is the end all be all for Star Wars costuming. And it's not because it's all fictional. It's all made up. So, so that's kind of my take on, on that club. Yeah. I, I, when I first started listening to your podcast, I went through all the, the most listened to <laughs> first. Mm -hmm. And I was like one of the, mm -hmm. I think that's like one of your biggest, bigger episodes. It is, yeah. <laughs> it was very interesting because I had no idea about it. I mean, I knew what the five or first was, but that yeah. that, that was it. <laughs> that was yeah. It. If you're interested in learning more, I, I did do an episode, and I, and I go pretty hard on them, but I, I think it was deserved, and I think it was earned. And and the founder actually, the founder of the five or first actually emailed me and was very gracious and and thanked me for doing that and said that this thing has grown beyond what he initially wanted for it, and he hopes that it gets back to what he did want it to be. And so that was cool. In a similar area of questions and topics, do you think the positives of social media still heavily outweigh the negatives or is it more going towards a 50-50 currently? Uh, interconnectivity between people or among people, I think is the most important thing. The fact that you and I can sit here and have a conversation mm -hmm. from across the planet and get to know each other and get to share stories and I can learn from you and you can learn from me is more valuable than anything else. And so overall, I think it's great. What I'd like to see, honestly, I would like people to have to attach their names to their social media profiles. Yeah. I think that uh, the internet should be regulated in a way that there is no more an, an anonymity uh, that, that nobody else can be anonymous, that if you want to make a statement, you're more than welcome to make a statement. Nobody's censoring you. But now your name and your profile, it's attached to your, you know, your, 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 mm -hmm. your driver's license or, you know, your passport. It's, it's like all there. If you want to have a social media profile, you are Michael Canavo or, or, you know, you are whoever it is and, and you have to Stick to that. So if you say things that are terrible, you're more than welcome to, but it might cost you a job. It might cost you, you know, your education. And I, and I like that. I like the general idea of that. And I think that too sometimes, but other times I'm just like, okay, but like the entirety of like uh, political news from other countries would be different that way. Like there would be more. How come? Like, for example, like whistleblowing. If someone, right. if, well, you would, yeah, if you would absolutely. share, if you would share something, someone else whistle about your country, 
your government could attach that to your name, so that's not all. There, there can, are then, negative sides to that. And, and I and I and I agree. There there can be allowances, mm -hmm, I think. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, for people like you and I, who yeah. we're not doing that, we're mm -hmm. making you know we're 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 making comments about Star Wars or or fandoms. Course, I think yeah. that that. I do think that should be attached because, you know, I mean, I, I've been uh, on Twitter. It's a, it's a good example. I, I jumped off Twitter recently because mm -hmm. I was so sick of how gross it was there. I was, I, I love so many of the people I met through Twitter, but I will tell you, like I was pictured with Rahul Kohli in a photo that he posted and I'm, you know, for those of you who have never seen me, I'm, I'm just a very typical, boring, straight white male. Um, uh, you know, my family's from Italy but uh, I'm, I'm very, you know, light skinned. And when I posted that photo, when Rahul posted that photo with me, a bunch of people started attacking me and attacking Rahul because I was white. It's literally what they were saying. Why would you give this white man a platform? Why would you do this for this white dude? And then Rahul started blocking him. And then they were like, wow, you blocked me over a white guy. And that to me was like, I don't think you would have said that if your name was attached to it. And I understand. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I would say, <laughs> I can. <laughs> this would be a bold, I have. I would say ninety nine percent of. I would say ninety nine percent of the of the world's problems are from uh, from white dudes. I get it. I I'm not denying <laughs> that there's there's a lot of trouble uh, from that crowd. But I have done nothing to be a part of that and i've only ever spoken out against that, that and was, so to that's kind of also, just be that's in. also such a good connection to the don't assume anything of the person right because i mean right. i know i know what incident you're talking about um right. because i'm in that fandom that most of that came from and that's like one of those uh, that was one of those moments where, she, where people just assumed stuff about how you live your life and i was i just right. sat there i watched it and i was like what is Y'all, do you all you know what what these men did for precaution precautions because of the pandemic? Did do you know oh, everything right, they yeah. say? You know, like I mean, we absolutely. <laughs> and and that's the thing is is around our around our necks and even you know the mask thing. Absolutely, we wore masks the entire time. Um, there was the moment where we took the photo, and so the mask is pulled around my neck. Um, and then right after the photo, it went right back up. And sure, like don't travel during the pandemic. Absolutely, like um, you know, I did a, I did a, uh, I did a, like a, a watch, a watch event with for the finale with uh, some podcasters that normally live in Texas, but they're they're moving out here, and so we've started a company together. A um, little bit of an inside look here. Um, and so we had to spend time together doing paperwork and searching for buildings and searching for apartments. And so we all got tested as a precaution. And I thought, hey, let me share that with everybody. Let me share that I was tested. Let me share that, um, you know, that that we are being so cautious and nobody got sick from it. Everybody was perfectly healthy. Um, but, you know, what I realized is it, 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 people there were a few people that were upset, not not a not a crazy amount, like it was what, a dozen people total. Mm -hmm. But um I realized like no matter what I say or do as precautions, I think that that didn't, that came across as insensitive. And I understand that. And mm -hmm. I actually removed the videos because I didn't want to be quote profiting off of content that made some people upset. Yeah. And so all those videos are gone. They, it's like, they don't exist. Um, because out of respect for everybody that said like, Hey, you should think more about encouraging this behavior. I was like, shoot, you're right, because people see that and they're like, I can do that too. And they don't know the entire story. They don't mm -hmm. know that we were all tested multiple times, that we did uh, uh, a quarantine, that we were separated long enough. And no matter what I did, I couldn't clearly convey that to the internet. And yep. I put content up that was seen by hundreds of thousands of people. And they're not all going to know that. And so that on me, I need to be a better representative of sanity yeah. uh, for lack of yeah, a better yeah, word of, of yeah. being a good person and so that's why all of those videos were removed because i was like you know you're right i don't want to be a part of a culture that that encourages making content with other people through a pandemic and could potentially put people at risk because somebody might not know what i went through to make sure that we were safe and they're like well rex and around it and i'm gonna do it too yeah but uh, but also like how how you bring that up online is also like super like important when right that, that controversy um right. 
was like it was brought up very inflammatory and i i i mean i came online after it happened and i just looked through it and i was like uh we're all like all the people that i saw that were involved in it were like over 18 and i was like you all went to school you learned how to you know make a point without being inflammatory yeah. whatever but like yes yeah, yeah. stuff like that is especially they like, just wanted to attack as, especially in fandom spaces that's very yeah toxic it i think it does you know and i'll give them the benefit of the doubt i think it comes from a good place i think it comes from a place of wanting to make sure that people stay safe but yeah <laughs> you don't know the whole story it's like you have to you know, and I had somebody DM me and that was the coolest part was somebody was like, hey, you know, I, I don't want to make a public post. I wanted to to kind of talk to you about it personally. And that meant the most to me, you know, because that's fine. You can drag me. I'm an easy target to drag. You can you can drag anybody who has a big following. And, you know, when I searched, you know, the username and I was like, what are people are saying? A lot of people were like, who's rexing around? Why are we talking about him? And that's where it was like, <laughs> that's where it kind of was picking up traction. because People don't even know who I am. I'm nobody yeah, to them. Yeah, and so yeah. now they're all like kind of perpetuating the story of like, oh my gosh, rexing around, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, you don't even know a thing about me, mm -hmm. but you're jumping into the conversation to be relevant. And that's where it loses its, its credibility to me. Yeah. Cause I think initially yeah. those people just, they just want to help and they're being a little too aggressive about it or maybe not doing it in the best way. And so, you know, maybe it does come from good intentions. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But the best thing I could do was to jump off that platform and to be way more careful about how I portray what I'm doing. I said yesterday to like one of my of, of my friends that it's done often done in a way where it where it implies that the person can't improve their behavior. Mm. I think that's the big problem. When people point something out, even if it's aggressive, there still needs to be like some indication of, oh yeah, you can do better. And, teaching uh, yeah, yeah yeah learning yeah like i agree unless someone is like straight up like on purpose like racist or sexist then absolutely then usually they don't do that stuff they do or they that the, the stuff they said on purpose or yeah. out of the bad intention and a lot of a lot of times online it's like automatically people assume that it had like bad intentions because you did it <laughs> and that's a big that's well a big thing. and i think that's an important note is like nobody wakes up and looks in the mirror and they go i'm gonna be a villain today yeah and there you know there is a point zero 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 one percent of the population who does but for the most part nobody online wakes up and goes i want to be a bad guy today mm. no we wake up and we say we're gonna make the best decisions that we can make for ourselves and hopefully it works and sometimes we make wrong decisions and Unfortunately, you know, like having a big platform and a big following means that if you make a decision people don't like, um, you're going to hear about it and people are going to be vocal about it. And there are going to people be people who see it as an opportunity to destroy you. Oh, yeah. Um, because yeah. no matter what you do, you're a villain in somebody's story. So, you know, I think that's what I've been learning this year a lot. And, and Twitter did teach me a lot. And, you know, it, it is a bummer because I do have so many people on that platform that are so wonderful and caring and nice. But it was messing up my mental health. It was really bringing me down. I was like checking every five minutes to make sure nothing was oh, being yeah. said. I was like, what am I doing? So like just getting rid of the app changed. It changed my sanity. It really did. I I do like one week or two week uh, detoxes from Twitter every yeah. now and then, because yeah. especially on Stan Twitter, <laughs> how we all call yeah. it, um, it can get so obsessive in the very negative way where it actually yeah. like where you wait some some weird part of your self-worth so, somehow mm -hmm. connected to it but it, i mean it's also telling us a lot about our own like psychology what we need to work on because right. our like our behavior is like our the mirror of our mental health right so I think, absolutely i mean we even the whole like controversies and what what not that the, all the stuff that is happening and how it's brought up is also reflecting how a lot of people maybe either it's misunderstanding because it's written in text usually what people attack mm -hmm. or it's someone projecting their own psychological wounds on others <laughs> absolutely and i think i think stan twitter is filled with some of the most loving wonderful sweet mm -hmm. passionate people yep and i think it's also yep. filled with some people who are really working through issues and and those issues come out and then you see it in in attacks and you see it in canceling people and and you know that's that's just it just is what it is so it's not all bad but no. yeah for me it was it was better to to separate myself from that that i understand that <laughs> 
Uh, I had that a long time with uh, Instagram. I mean, it's not as toxic, but it still does a lot of yeah. stuff to your mental health. And like sometimes a, yeah. a year or two ago, I just went an entire month or six weeks. I don't know what it was again, just without like Instagram. And then since then, I, I just don't use the app this, the same way again anymore. It's I, it's more I'm more indifferent about it. That's also a very interesting direction to go yeah. in. Yeah. Um, fitting to the topic, what always helps you through bad times like what is your like go-to like thing that you mm. do when you have like going through a bad time have a bad day yeah <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you know it, it, it's everybody's gonna be very very different and and you know i don't want to say that i use uh like my faith or spirituality as a crutch because that's a that's an easy thing to just say mm -hmm. Well, I go meditate, I go pray, I go, you know, sit in a corner and breathe. Like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't always work. It doesn't, it's not a, it's not a fix your problem yeah, yeah. sort of thing. And, and I, I think I get frustrated when people say, you know, like, uh, you know, because I, I, so I, I grew up in a, a very Christian conservative home. And um, as I've been out in the world, obviously, you know, making my own decisions and learning about, you know, that whole end of things. And I do think that um, there is so much truth in like uh, the biblical history. Um, but I also do think that uh, I, I, I living in America, Amer quote, American Christianity is, is a cult and it's, it can be evil and not all, um, not all, but there's this, you know, we saw a lot. We saw, we saw a lot with, uh, with Trump and the election and, and you yeah. saw a very dark and evil side. You saw people with giant Jesus flags, breaking down the walls of the Capitol building mm -hmm. and, and like, and, and killing people. And so, um, you know, and, and while there is evil on both sides, I'm, I'm only addressing that part for this story. Um, so, you know, for me, it's, it's hard for me to just be like, Hey, go pray. It's going to be better. Like it, it doesn't always fix things, but it is a big, a big part is that, but I think another big part is understanding that it doesn't matter nothing really matters. Mm. And I think it's so clear to see that when you look at these giant celebrities that are canceled every other day on Twitter and they keep working and they keep making yeah. their stuff and they yeah. keep doing what they think is right. And, um, you know, when you realize that you're like, Oh, why am I letting people control my happiness? Why am I letting these people who are also hurting just like I am dictate whether I am happy or not. And once I started kind of realizing that, that like no human being should have power over how I value myself, it really helped me to ignore the hate. Um, you know, when you get 9 million views on a TikTok, you, there's a lot of opinions. Oh, People yeah. have a lot of opinions. <laughs> yeah. And so you yeah. got to be okay to be like, you know what? You don't matter to me. I don't, you don't even deserve a response. And I think that's where I'm at now is like detachment, think whatever you want. Yeah. Think whatever you want about me. You, you don't, you don't matter. You don't dictate my worth. And that that's been very helpful. Yeah. The making, making it clear to yourself what's in your control and what's not in control and letting yeah. what's out of your control go. Yeah. <laughs> I, we I think can that's only be fun. the best versions of ourselves and, and that's it. Yeah. We can't, we can't change other people. I feel like a lot right. of people, need to repeat that to themselves more often yeah. not me yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people because a lot of people yeah. really they, they, they push and push and push and they don't realize yep. they, they can only do that they can only lead by example um, yep. and even that doesn't automatically change other people yeah which is a good advice for t people in their early 20s late teens which brings me to my next question what advice would you give your 20 year old self with the knowledge you have now? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, uh, so let's just, for the sake of this whole conversation with, with social media, let's just kind of keep it here. Mm -hmm. Um, back when I first got in this community, I, I mentioned I got mixed up with the wrong people. Uh, I had falling outs with, with a couple, well, mainly just one person, which led to a couple people because that, you know, starts to spread. I would do anything to take that all back. I would do anything to go back and repair that situation. And I, not to say that I think that that person is making the right decisions or I agree with the person I had a falling out with. No, I, I, I don't. And I, I still don't, but I could have shown more love. I could have been more considerate. 
I could have been more careful with my words. I could have not gotten angry. I could have changed so many things from a base level of how I handled confrontation, arguments, people I didn't get along with. And if I could go back, if there's one thing, Ray, that I think about every night when I go to bed, it's that. It's that I could have always been nicer. And I'm still dealing with the consequences of not being more careful with how I handled that situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and without getting into detail in the situation, there was it was a pretty big falling out that had to do with feelings and emotions and relationships and friendships and anything could have been solved with love. Um, you know, recently I had a uh, I had a cousin who um, was posting some pretty crazy things. Was posting some pretty outlandish things regarding the election. Um, and, and, you know, for those listening in Europe, it is torn families apart. Like I've blocked relatives on Facebook and on Instagram that I grew up with, uh, because you kind of just pick sides. And, you know, even recently we had gotten into it about posts that she was making. And then just last night I sent her a message and I said, Hey, I just want you to know, I love you. And it was, it took me two seconds to write that. And mm -hmm. it hurt. It hurt to write that. Yeah. It hurt to say, I love you because it meant that I was humbling myself enough to get off my high horse and say, Hey, no matter what, you're important to me. And, and I think that reshaped the future of our entire relationship. We don't have to get along. We don't have to even talk. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily want to continue talking too yeah, much. Yeah. Um, but I fixed it, but I fixed this vicious back and forth we were having to where there's no more vicious back and forth because I realized, Hey, she's not going to change her mind. And maybe someday she will, but it's not going to be because of me. Mm -hmm. And so all I need to do is make sure that I show her love. And that's what I've been trying to do more of. And, and, you know, there's that crew that, 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 um, that I had the falling out with. So it was one person with a couple best friends. And so let's just say there's three of them. I want to by the end of this year have that resolved because for myself it, it's not worth me it, it, it the the amount of real estate that it takes up in my head it's ray it's crazy mm -hmm. because it was four years ago it shouldn't matter anymore but it still does and it still kind of flares up and still pops up and i hear about screenshots being passed around still and it's like for what for what if we could just agree to say hey we don't we don't agree but I'm going to con continue showing you love and you're going to continue showing me love. I, I, the world would be such a better place. And that's why, you know, in my bio on my personal Instagram, it, it says love people because that's just all that we can do. And it's all that we've, we've been called to do is just love people more. And, and it, at the root of every problem, if there was love, it would be resolved. If those people who came at me on Twitter chose at any moment to love, the entire situation would have been different. We would potentially be friends. You know, and there's 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 a few small Star Wars podcasts that that the same goes for them. They talk endless trash on the internet. I don't know why. I don't know why. I haven't interacted with any of them. But if at any point they were like, yeah, I'm just going to reach out and see what's going on. I bet you the story would be so different. Yeah. And so the, the advice I would give to myself is to love people better and to love people more. And act from like a place of compassion instead of confrontation. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And like building healthy skills to like communicate when people disagree with you and you disagree with people. That's important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, you use the, the family example. I feel like a lot of people can relate to that with other stuff that's like not politically connected. And even, and even I mean, Europe isn't without right wing people. Um, sad, <laughs> sadly, even in Germany, we have yeah yeah i know that, i mean if there's a complete different nuance to it in germany if you decide to vote publicly for like right-wing parties then yeah, i feel like you kind of deserve to at least have like be, be a little bit estranged from your family like still from a place of like i don't want more confrontation with you i have a uh, right one family i don't member. need to see yeah, you yeah. or talk to you yeah. but we don't actively hate each other yeah i mean even even if they hate you that just knowing that right. you don't hate them or making it clear that you don't hate them is like making makes you so much healthier yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that's like yeah. so much inner inner peace that that brings you i mean you said it like mm -hmm. how much real estate in your head that 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 has that makes such a difference if you yeah i don't mm -hmm. know this is 
this is like I feel like everyone struggles with that to an extent. I mean, the amount yeah. of people I talk to in all age ranges that have exactly that kind of problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I feel like a lot of people. I don't, you know, uh, across the board, I don't talk trash anymore. It's just not worth it. If somebody wants to talk negatively about somebody else, I don't respond. Um, I have hundreds of unread text messages for that very reason because mm -hmm. if I see something come in, um, I don't let it take up my time. I don't let it control any bit of me, not only because you don't know when those things are going to get screenshot and shared, but because it it takes up too much valuable space and time that you could be loving people instead. I still have to learn that a little bit <laughs> in some cases. I mean, yeah. we all, we all yeah, do, yeah, right? yeah, and yeah, I'm not yeah, condemning yeah. people who who do, but you know, I think it starts with just deciding not to feed into it. It's, it's a hard decision to make, but the more you make it, the easier it becomes. And even if you talk about, if, if even, okay, I know a lot of people, especially my age, like I'm 20, 21, um, still, they say they don't like gossiping, but they still do gossip. Yeah. Um, we all do. Yeah. When, when gossiping, doing it, 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 all, it also helps just like starting out by not doing it from a point of toxicity, but from a point of like, right. this was like from a, from an objective standpoint, not okay, and this is why. Sharing a story. Yeah, yeah. and then talking, yeah. talk, like just making sure, like, do do you see this the same objectively, subjectively? Yeah. That that's already like on a completely different level, and then not doing that at all is on a completely different level again. But then we go into the whole uh, area of like, should this be talked about, or is this too much drama, or is this like a super important like thing that needs to be addressed? That's all, or also like, is it gossip? Right. And, or is and it, I think. Yeah. I think it's fair to work your way up like it's a ladder. You just yeah. take one step at a time. Yeah. So the first thing is like, hey, I'm going to try to try to catch myself more often. I don't need to catch myself every time, but I'm going to try to slow down on it. Yeah. And then that gets easier and you practice that. So you move up to the next la the next step and you're like, all right, I'm going to stop responding to it ultimately. And then that becomes easier. And then it goes, okay, well, I'm going to take that. And when somebody says something negative, I'm going to say something positive. Mm -hmm. And so now you're just kind of working your way up. And, and I think that's how you ultimately grow and, and change and do better. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are like kind of stuck in like the, in the, uh, what I just described, like being like not toxic about it, yeah. but like still talking about it. And I feel a lot of people yeah. need to be like, me included, need to like step up to like the level of like not either not responding or responding with love because that's like right. that changes right. so it's much. Hard. Yeah, it's hard, it's especially hard. Yeah, especially if you like if you. I mean, every other people are like mirrors for ourselves, right? For our, like mm -hmm. stuff that makes us feel bad usually triggers mm -hmm. something from our past or whatever. And like seeing past that and being nice to that person is so hard because yeah. you want to act so badly from the place that that person just triggered. I mean, I'm, I'm researching a little bit about childhood wounds recently, which is why I'm talking mm. like this. But yeah, I find that, I find that very interesting. It's, it's I mean, it goes a little bit into shadow work. I don't know if you know what shadow work is. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know if I do. Shadow work is when you. I mean, it's pretty much just d d being your own psychoanalyst, <laughs> like just okay. just asking yourself why did I react like this to that person or that situation, and then digging inside like deeper like mm. where 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 where's the root of this what what situation what's just what situation started this behavior in me and that's i feel like a lot of people should like get into that i mean maybe i will do an entire episode solo episode on shadow work because that's a very interesting topic just seeing other people as a mirror for yourself it's very yeah, interesting I'd love to, it's very I'd love interesting to listen to that i need to i need to research a little bit more about it but like yeah it's I've I've tried doing it in recent weeks and I'm just I'm learning a lot of things about myself. <laughs> Let's that's just good. say that that's that's yeah. it's it's good yeah. But it's also hard. I mean, healing is. I feel like a lot yeah. of people think healing is just easy and hmm. Well, no, it's just the complete opposite. Sometimes you just sit in yeah. bed and you want to cry, but then yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's interesting. What do you think of when you hear the words self care? Huh. I. I yeah I think it's I think it's necessary I think that you know self care in a way that I, a lot of people don't do it uh, a, a lot of people don't take the time out of their day to consider themselves and you know on the opposite end of of the people who take 
all the time in the world to think about themselves. You know, it's like, <laughs> I think there that is, it is necessary to take a moment and do something special for yourself or do something that makes you feel good. It doesn't hurt others. And so finding that thing that keeps you excited. And for a long time, for me, it was the podcast was my self care. It was my moment every week to slow down and just talk. And I got to talk for an hour about things that made me happy, things that made me sad. It was a great outlet. And, you know, people started to listen and, and some of some of them did really well. And it was a fun thing. And then when it started to become taxing on me, my self-care was to stop doing that. You know, my mm-hmm. self-care was to stop making myself podcast every week. And so, uh, you know, I think it is important for people to do it and to consider themselves a bit more than they do. Um, but I also think it can can become a little bit, if you spend too much time doing it, you know, then it becomes very... Uh, Self-indulgent, uh, self-indulgent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I can, uh, I can attest to that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I mean, it's it's a balance. It, it it swings from day to day. I feel like a lot of people don't look at self-care from a standpoint of, oh yeah, making a doctor's appointment because you've been procrastinating it. For example, right, it's like one of my right. things that I keep procrastinating. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, a lot of people just when they think about self-care, I feel like they think. Oh yeah, face masks and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like products. It's so capitalistic. It goes deep. Yeah, it goes deeper than that for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the few and a lot of personal growth and self care stuff is very, very much based on companies making money. Yeah, <laughs> and yep. like you can't, you can't solve so many things with a face mask. Or I mean, you right. can you can you can solve a lot of stuff with eating healthy and working out, of course, but like that's not everything, <laughs> right? And I think you know, and I think the the self care that I really like is to make something. I don't normally say to buy things, you know, buying things does sometimes make me happy, but you know, also making things makes me happy. And mm. so whether that's making armor or making helmets, and sometimes I get obsessive with it and I focus and I dig in and I do so many, and it's like I've got a whole suit in three days. Um, which is sort of, it gets, it gets a little unhealthy, but uh, you know, and people are like, well, I'm not, I'm not creative like that. Well then, you know, do a podcast, get your thoughts down. And who cares if anybody listens, Mm -hmm. do it for yourself. And if you do it for yourself, then it's going to be more than enough. And so there's, there's a million ways to self care creatively, even if you don't necessarily have artistic talent. True. True. I feel like uh, what you describe when you like do your cosplay armor is uh, the flow state. I have an old, a whole episode on that. Like the flow mm. state is like right between being bored and being overwhelmed because it, like when you work on these things, you forget not like you don't think about your normal thoughts. Like you you you, right. you in that state you cannot overthink. So there's it's a form of self care because you focus so much on something that you can't worry about things that's that's actually really good that's why a lot of people i mean me included i i love writing i love uh, painting i have an ipad i'm painting stuff on my ipad not enough people create to to get themselves relaxed and just having like creating not to not to get people to engage with it but creating for yourself yeah or even yeah, it, yeah, at least coming from that point. I mean, sometimes I'm just like, oh, I'm I'm gonna create this. For, for example, last week after I talked to Dodge, uh, I was like, you know what? I'm like in the mood to try like uh, uh, a Mandalorian helmet and m- put it in into in the colors of the Lady Lorians because they're very similar to my brand colors. And I did that, and I was like. You know, I made that for myself, but now that I'm finished, I can share it. I mean, sometimes yeah, you do it yeah, for absolutely. yourself, and then you're like, no, no, I'm gonna share this. That's also absolutely. that's also like from a, it's also kind of vulnerable to do that because you made it for yourself technically, but then you decide to share it with someone. That's also good. That's a good good exercise. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Sharing absolutely your creativity. I mean, wait. I remember first starting my YouTube channel and I was like, oh my God, I'm sharing a piece for me with like everyone in the world. Everyone can access this. <laughs> it's scary, but it's worth it usually. And even if nobody reacts, you that's a, an, an exercise of courage, right? Right. Absolutely. You put yourself out there. Yeah. I think that's huge. <sighs> I think that's <laughs> that was... I mean, um, that was a really good conversation. <laughs> um, I think that was, those were all questions. Where can people find cool. you online? 
Hi, everybody. You can find me uh, all platforms at Rexon underscore around. You can, you can, if you want to see what business is up to, you can check out Super 73. Uh, we make cool little electric motorbikes. Um, and then, you know, I've got kind of my personal side of it, which is Michael Canavo. Uh, you can search that. You can basically find that on any Rexon around platform too, but I'm on Instagram at Michael Canavo too. And that's just my personal adventures. A lot of weird celebrity photos I get to take and I try to be silly with it and, and keep it lighthearted. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Thanks for coming on to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I think you have a very important podcast and I'm really excited for people to uh, find you and realize how much gold um, you're uncovering with talking about these issues and, and this sort of thing. Cause I don't think a lot of people are. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Bye. Bye. Man, what an episode. That was a lot of chaos, a lot of deep talk, a lot of everything. I will link my course everything in the show notes so like his podcast his social media his company and i would like to hear from you on the podcast social media that are also linked in the show notes how what do you think of this episode <laughs> because it went all over the place <laughs> and yeah let me know on the social media and until next time take care Bye.